Hi guys, Julie Walls here with All Things Brain Retraining. Um, I'm just finished up with one of my sauna sessions and um, I'm in my workout room and I'm just taking a break and relaxing as the sun's going down and reflecting on my day. And um, I get a lot of questions on how to formulate, how to customize your rounds, what, you know, how to make them better, how, how to make them more impactful. Um, it really the secret is, is just really focusing in on connectivity with your spirit guide, feeling completely surrounded with unconditional love and support, referring to your inner child work, which is basically breaking down um, the fears and really giving your inner child, which is the inner you, the, 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 inner, the inner child that's needing the love, needing the support, needing the unconditional love and support, and um, and needing to help break down those fears, and also to understand or to to really bring home the point that we have a limbic system limbic system uh, issue, and um, and as we're trying to repair and heal our bodies, um, we have a lot of resistance. Our body, our brains want to keep us protected. And one of the ways that it does it is it goes with association. So let's say you had a seizure in a in a my, your first seizure. Let's say in a restaurant, the brain doesn't understand that the restaurant isn't the danger zone. It doesn't understand that the seizure or the panic attack that you had um, wasn't because of the environment. It's because of whatever was going on in your body. So <clears throat> we have to start recognizing associations. And when, when we do, we will see that our bodies are reactive to our environment um, because, it's, because the brain is setting these alarms and it's trying to protect our bodies, okay? So when we recognize associations, we can, we can start utilizing and working those in our rounds. Um, a lot of people like to do the DNRS. You can recreate a scenario. Let's say you had panic attacks in a restaurant before, um, and you, you found yourself making up excuses, avoidance type behaviors. So you don't have to, you don't want to go to the restaurant or you found yourself before you're walking in the restaurant, feeling a little bit uneasy, you know, maybe feeling dizzy or, um, uh, your heart's racing or whatever, that's your body's way of saying, get out, get out, go, go. And so we have to learn to create a round around taking away that association of danger with the environment. So you, you want to unassociate danger with the environment that you had that awful experience in. And so you can incorporate that in your round through a DNRS. The DNRS is great. Go back to old memories of maybe where you were you know, in the restaurant before and you were having a great time and, and, and really get the feels from that experience. That will help then the next time you go into that restaurant to not have those feelings. Um, you can apply this to food. People have um, you know, issues with food sensitivities to chemicals. You can utilize the DNRS and Gupta to create, to unassociate those things because your brain wants to associate it with danger and it wants to protect you. So you're going to be fearful when you start put certain types of foods in your mouth. So you need to create a safe type um, round around the feels from eating foods and create, make it in your mind like a scenario that it's not dangerous. These foods are not dangerous to put in my body. My body will accept them. And I've been there before and I've eaten these foods before and I, and I, you know, I was safe before when I ate them. Um, you have to create these, I call them, there's associations, there's triggers, and then you have to work on, triggers are what we get exposed to. And triggers can be anything with people, it could be events, it could be um, social media, anything that's going to create tension, stress, anxiety in your body. And those triggers we can protect ourselves from. Associations are, I, I associate, I think of associations as more of like places, um, 
uh, things like entities that we associate, you know, people have multiple chemical sensitivity and anything that's, you know, elicits a, chem elicits a chemical smell or whatever, that's danger. Your brain is sending alarm signals and saying danger, danger, danger. So we have to do these brain retraining rounds to disassociate these items, these things, these places as danger. Um, triggers are what we protect ourselves from, okay? So triggers we can control. We can control our access to the internet. We can control to the internet. We can control our access to social media. We can limit our interaction with people that are triggers for us. Um, and then we put if we have triggers, we address the fear that's associated with that trigger. Okay, and then the fear usually elicits a behavior. If that makes sense, so you have a fear that's associated to the trigger, like fear of inadequacy, fear of suffering, fear of uh, judgment or whatever. And then you want, to, and then usually a lot of people will use their illness as an escape to not have to deal with these associations, to not have to deal with triggers um, or people. You know, you can protect yourself from social media by taking it off your phone or not un undoing your Facebook account, getting off of Facebook. Um, there's so many things that you can do. And any, anytime anybody contacts me, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing to protect yourself from triggers? Um, that's my first question that I ask people. What, what are you triggered by? What, you know, what is it that you're, that you're fearful of? And what is it that makes you feel uneasy, uneasy and, and tension and everything else? Um, these are the things that I talk about to people when I do brain retraining, like helping others with brain retraining. Um, I'm not a coach. I'm not a licensed coach. I'm just a brain retrainer. And I've learned as I've been going through this whole process of healing and healing my mind and my body and recovering from medical PTSD. Um, it's a process. And the more you put energy into your rounds, the more effective it will be. So number one is recognizing associations, working on detaching that negative feeling or connection to that association. Number two is protecting yourself from triggers. Number three is getting yourself connected to something, someone that unconditionally loves you. That is inner faith. I don't connect it to religion. You can utilize the earth. You can utilize whatever your, your beliefs are. Um, but you have to go outside yourself and get that unconditional love and support to connect to in your rounds. And then two of the most important pieces of your rounds are inner child. You need to really, really work on coveting that inner child, which is protecting yourself from triggers. Again, talking to yourself lovingly. Um, even when you have it, the inner dialogue has to be loving. You have to learn how to unconditionally love your body, love your mind, love your whole essence, your whole being. That's really, really important with inner child work. And that's important in your round. Um, and then the other part is, I mean, the visualizations can be very difficult for people, but if you can... Think of scenarios in your head. You can break it down so easily. It's just like looking at a picture. It's like watching a movie. It's just saying what you're seeing in your mind on the screen. And I try to have my first visual as a grounding visual. And that could be anything that you. I pull in a lot of symbolism in my grounding visual. And I will demonstrate around here um, that I do. And then I always do another visual. Because my first visual is connecting to my my uh, spirit guide or my unconditional entity, loving support entity. And then, um, and then we go to a grounding visual to keep me grounded, to keep me, to actually really shift me from being in fear mode or, you know, being in that fearful looping state. Um, and then when you're in that grounding visual, um, it, you'll feel the shift of energy in your body because the body wants to get into a calm state. And then once you get out of that, 
work on your motivator self, which I want to talk a lot about. That's why I talk in my previous videos about having journals, having boards. The DNRS is great. I did boards. I showed them in my videos. Um, you can go up and look and see it, like why brain retraining part one, part two, um, brain retraining videos that I posted on YouTube. Um, with the DNRS, and I will show you again, but with the DNRS, I had memory boards because I'd have to refer back to memories. I had um, future visualization boards. I had healing boards. Um, I had, yes, future visualizations of all of the things I had planned on doing, um, goals I set for myself, how I would see myself in the future, and I, I had them on a board that I put up on my walls to look at. Um, I also had an evidence board, an evidence board that I would write down all of my healing, like what wins I had. So that way I could always refer back. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yesterday I had a really good day and I'm going to pull that into my round and, um, and incorporate that, incorporate that into my future visualization and really connect to that. Um, as I'm doing Gupta and as, as I've been doing Gupta rounds, um, I do journals. He highly, highly recommends journals. So I went from the DNRS to doing journals because, I mean, I had all these big boards, big poster boards up on the wall. It was getting ridiculous. But um, so then I simplified and I went to journals. So I have two different journals, okay? So my first journal is my looping journal. What are my loops for the day, okay? And... Um, I write down, like, let's say I'm dealing with some fear or, you know, some it's and, and it could be chronic fatigue type, you know, fatigue type symptoms or energy issues. And then the fear is I'm going to suffer with this forever. I've got chronic fatigue syndrome. Okay. And then I post underneath from my day, because usually at the end of the day on my other journal, I write wins for the day. So gratitude and wins like what I'm grateful for for my day and what I accomplished and what I noticed was you know a win for the day it could be very simple it could be um, I talked on the phone for 15 minutes to my sister and was able to highly focus on that conversation or it could be I went outside and I walked you know down and around the block and back and I got the sunshine on my face and it was a really grateful, wonderful experience. You need to write these down because what you need to do then is you take that evidence and you apply it to your rounds because that's going to be your motivational um, coach self talking to yourself. You're going to take your wins and you're going to say, this is my wins from the day and I'm going to utilize it in my round to remind myself and remind my brain that it is healing. The body needs to connect to evidence. It needs to connect to those wins. It needs to have positive momentum to keep going, to keep moving forward with brain retraining. You need that. You need all of that. You have to put that into your rounds in order to make them highly effective. And I'm telling you, you, you may not have to brain retrain forever, okay? Um, this might be a smoother, quicker process for you if you can really customize your rounds and do the work before you create your round. That's very important. Do some preparation. Just don't go willy-nilly and do it. I know you're exhausted. I know you're tired. I know you don't have the brain power to do this, but I'm telling you, just start simple. Start with the first thing, which is just acknowledging your triggers. You can do the simplest thing by just, I tell people all the time, by just protecting yourself. That's a first act of self-love is protecting yourself from triggers. What are your triggers? Start really looking at your day and saying, oh my gosh, I'm on all these different Facebook boards for suffering and sickness and looking and searching for answers and it's not helping me. It's keeping me in fight or flight. So that could be a trigger for you. Write it down and start slowly pulling yourself away from that. And maybe even recognize how your body feels when you are exposed to these triggers. Maybe do a little bit of check and say, you know what? That's a trigger for me. I need to back off. I need to step away from that trigger and protect myself. And that's a form of coveting your inner child. That's, that's the work we're doing here. And... Um, 
I get a lot of questions about how to, you know, like I said, how to formulate my rounds how to get the most, how to maximize our efforts towards putting, brain retraining is not easy. It's not easy work. It's work and, um, and it's all on us. I mean, everything is put on our shoulders, but I'm telling you, if you do the work and you, and you customize your rounds and you put a lot of energy and effort into it, the rewards are tremendous. You're going to heal your mind and your body. Your body wants to heal. Your mind is directing everything. So do the work with brain retraining and really put, you know, put your, put your energy into it. Watch my previous videos. I will show you my boards that I used. Um, I showed you my journals on how I lay out my rounds and then watch one of my rounds. Watch how I, how I construct it and how I, um, you know, I use my journals as I'm, preparing for my rounds to start like I go to what my my loops are it could be one specific loop it could be six different loops from the day okay you may have to do five or six different rounds for each of those loops it's all on you however you want to construct it but really address those fears and then work on that inner child to protect yourself and remind yourself that you are brain retraining you are doing the work you are healing and then you utilize your grateful journal, your evidence board or whatever you have that you wrote down for the wins for the day and you remind yourself of that and you say, see, you're healing. Your brain and your body are, con are reconnecting. Things are getting back in line. It's a process. It's a slow, steady process. But if you do the work and you do it efficiently and you customize your rounds, they're going to be more impactful for you and you will excel further in your healing. I'm telling you, I'm a witness to this. <laughs> I am my own witness. And it's all about regaining confidence within us. Learning how to love our bodies. Learning how to trust in our healing paths. Learning to be confident again. Learning to rebuild a relationship with our bodies. I mean, we're all starting from infancy as we're doing the brain retraining. We're starting from infancy and we're learning how to slowly crawl. And then we're going to start standing up and we're going to start walking. And then we're going to start running and we're going to be back to living our lives again. But we're going to be more proactive this time around, right? And do the things that we need to do to keep our minds protected, keep our bodies safe and protected, and um, the, the payoffs are huge. It's just a matter of doing the work, patience, and time. And really congratu congratulate yourself. If you're watching this video, you're interested in brain retraining. That's a huge step. That means your brain is working. That means your body wants to heal. That means whatever powers are the universe, God, whatever is, is guiding you to this. It's telling you to start. Medical PTSD is real. If, you've, if you have um, experienced any long-term illness, um, something that was chronic, chronic pain, that creates trauma in the brain. Your body is in fear mode. It's in the loop. And we have to get it out of it. We have to disarm that alarm system that's going off in your brain because that's really what it is. And your body is distracting from the fear and it's redirecting it to redirecting it to pain, to energy issues, to the feels all over your body because you're not addressing the real deep rooted issue, if that makes sense. And it comes back to fear. Okay. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get off here, but stay tuned. I'm going to do a round, um, figured it's a great time to do it so you can see me doing my round and, um, and how effective it is. So I hope you all, um, have a great day and please continue brain retraining. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. All my love to you. Biggest hugs. Take care.